so the next talk is going to be about a computational Cyrilson's theorem for the value of a compile of compiled XOR games. Uh, this is a work of David Chui, Julio Malavolta, Arthur Mehta, uh, Anand Natarajan, Connor Paddock, Simon Schmidt, Michael Walter, and Tina Zhang. And Simon will give the talk. Exactly. Yes. Well, so uh, thanks so much for the introduction. So yeah, as, as you already heard, we will talk about some computational theorem theorem for the value of compiled XOR games. And XOR games are non-local games and then compiled non-local games. So we have some compilation procedure for non-local games. And then the Cyrilson theorem will just be some upper bound of the winning probability for the compiled XOR games. Okay. So what is a non-local game? So in a non-local game, we have two players and a referee and uh, the players, they, they get some questions from some uh, question sets and they have to answer with uh, A and B from some answer sets. And once they received their questions A and B, they are not allowed to communicate anymore. And for each non-local game, there's a verification function, so a function uh, with values in zero and one, and the players win if and only if this function is actually equal to one. And so the, the idea is, so in a non-local game, the players should be very far apart, so they cannot communicate. And the goal of the players is to, to actually maximize the winning probability. So this is this omega where pi is the, the distribution. So the probability of uh, the referee sending x to Alice and y to Bob then uh, V is this verification function, and P is the, the probability of uh, Alice and Bob uh, getting X and Y and answering with A and B. And where does this probability distribution, so this P comes from? So before the game, they are allowed to, to agree on some strategy. And then depending on this strategy, one, one gets this probability distribution. And uh, one way to to model such strategies in the in the case of um, you know when the the two players share some entangled state is that uh, so we, we have some some state in some tensor productivity space and uh, then Alice and Bob are allowed to, to do local measurements on uh, on their on their local Hilbert space so uh, those are just uh, yeah positive operator valued measures so I have some positive operators that uh, sum up to identity. And then the, the correlation we get, so the probability of uh, Alice and Bob receiving X and Y and answering with A and B is really, so I have the, the state and in there I have the, the measurement operators in the tensor product. Okay, so this is a non-local game. So what is the, the compilation we do for such a non-local game? So the general idea is that, okay, in a non-local game, the players are so far apart that they cannot communicate. And now, instead of having this uh, non-locality assumption, we want to put some crypto assumption. And um, this should guarantee some, some similar assumption as the non-locality. And for this, we, we use uh, a QHE scheme. So we uh, have some uh, algorithms, gen, eng, eval, and dec and uh, lambda is some security parameter. And now the, the game is not uh, simultaneous measurements with Alice and Bob, but we just have one player. And um, in the beginning of the, the protocol, so the verifier, he first used, uses gen to get some secret key. Then he uses pi, so the same one as he used in the, the non-local game to uh, sample questions for Alice and Bob. And now he uses an encryption, so he actually encrypts uh, the, the first question, sends it to the prover, and the prover now has to answer also in an encrypted fashion. Um, so this is basically to ensure that, okay, it's a sequential game, but in the first round, uh, the player or the prover doesn't know which question he got or what he answered in a sense. So um, in the second round, he has no information about uh, the first thing. So it's very similar to, I have two parties and one of them answers with something, but I don't know what the question was or what the answer was. And 
now in the, in the second round, so we had a first encrypted round, but the second one uh, is now really in the plain text. So we have the, the same question as in the normal code game. And also the answer set in the normal code game is the same. And then the players win if, so we now decrypt uh, the alpha, so the first answer of the prover with the same secret key. And then we want that the verification function of the non-local game is one. So we, we just win uh, in a similar way. Okay, and now what do we get as a correlation? So okay, we get a lot of sums or expectations for the secret key and encryption and decryption, but essentially it's like a sequential measurement. So we have some state, we apply measurement operators, and then in the, in the middle we get the, the POVM. Okay, uh, so what are the, the properties of my QHE scheme? So all of the algorithms are actually QPT algorithms. So for gen, I have some security parameter lambda where I get some secret key. Also for ANC, uh, I take the secret key and the message and get some ciphertext. Uh, the decoding or the decryption does exactly the same. So I take some, or the reverse, I take some secret key and the ciphertext and get some message back. And eval, so as you saw in the protocol, there was no eval, but I somehow want to, so if I have a strategy for a non-local game, I actually want to translate it to the compiled game. And this is what eval is for. So uh, if I have some, some tensor product uh, state, and some measurements, then I can use eval just on the, the first part of, uh, so of the, let's say A Hilbert space to actually work with the encrypted answer to, to do honest quantum. So if I have an honest quantum strategy, I can use it in the non author game. Okay, and what are the, the things we want to do? So, uh, or we, we want that the, uh, the compiled games actually do what we want. So the first thing is this correctness with auxiliary output, which is exactly what I, I said. So this eval should, should be in a way so I can use it to transfer non-local strategies to the compiled game with a similar winning probability. And then I also want to be um, secure against quantum distinguishers. So there should not be any QPT algorithm uh, that can, uh, distinguish the encryption of two fixed messages. Okay, and from the, the second part, we actually get some, so we had this uh, correlation or probability distribution. And for uh, from the QHE scheme, we actually get some non-signaling uh, condition for this uh, probability distribution. And maybe to remind you, what does non-signaling mean for a probability distribution? It's really that, so if I sum over A, then this should uh, be independent of the question of Alice. So basically, if you look at this in the non-local setting, then this means that the questions and the answers shouldn't depend on the questions of Alice. So Bob answers B independent of what Alice got, which makes sense because you shouldn't know this. Okay, and now, Okay, so the, the first part is just rewriting the uh, probability distribution for the compiled strategy in a yeah, more nice way with this, this trace and uh, some normalized state and some uh, sort of Bob operators. But then what we, what we actually get is, so we have this um, non-signaling property, which is really the same as before, but now we can actually take polynomials in the operators of Bob, not just the Bob operators. So usual non-signaling would just be, I have those uh, BYBs, I can put them in there. And then uh, this uh, sum over the trace would be the same up to negligible for X1 and X2. But now we have the same even for, for all polynomials in the Bob operators. Okay, that's very nice. So let's uh, see again, what is the, so what are the differences of quantum strategies for non-local games and compiled games? So for non-local games, I rather have some uh, tensor product Hilbert space. I can do some local measurements. Now I just have one Hilbert space. I'm just one player, but I can do sequential measurements and I have this very strong non-signaling condition um, that is based on the assumptions on uh, QHE. And then 
Okay, also non-local games are purely information theoretic, so there's no computational assumption. And for uh, the compiled games, we, our strategy should be QPT algorithms. It makes sense to, to use the, the QHG scheme. Okay, and then, yeah, as we, we saw before, so for the, the probability distributions, for one of them, we get this tensor perfect tilde space, and the other one, we actually get the, the trace of some, so some sequential measurement. Okay, so what do we know? So I should say, so this compiler was already uh, known from uh, Kalai et al. And they already worked on the, the classical. So what can I do with classical strategies for compiled games? They also had something for uh, the quantum strategies, but let's, let's begin with the classical strategies. So what, what, what I show is that if I take a non-local game, I use this compilation procedure, then for every classical strategy for the non-local game, I can also find a classical strategy for the compiled game that has at least um, the same winning probability up to a negligible function. And then, okay, so this is nice. I can basically compile every classical strategy, but what the, the second part says that, okay, I can actually not do more. So uh, if I have a classical strategy, any classical strategy, then I can also not be better than any classical strategy for the non-local game up to some negligible function. Okay, so this is the, the classical value. So there, everything's nice. And similarly for the, the quantum value, so we had this, this eval, and what this eval does is exactly um, yeah, what uh, this uh, theorem tells you. So for each, quantum strategy for a non-local game, I can also find a quantum strategy for the compiled game with uh, a similar winning probability. So um, yeah, I have to, the same winning probability as a, a non-local strategy up to some negligible function. And then of course we ask now, so can we also bound the quantum strategy or the, the quantum value? So do we know if, uh, if I have a quantum strategy for a compiled game, it cannot do better than any um, non-local strategy. And so what we did is we, we, we proved this in the case of XOR games. So what are XOR games? So it's, it's a non-local game. And uh, the feature of XOR games is that the answers for Alice and Bob are just bits. And also that there exists a function on uh, the questions of the referee. And then, um, yeah, based on this function, the players win, uh, or winning only depends on the XOR of the answers. So I just have bits, I can use it, uh, look at their XOR, and then depending on the, the value of the function, they either win or lose. Okay, and, uh, one example, which is, I guess, the most famous uh, non-local game, is the CHSH game where the questions and the answers are bits, and then I win if the, the product of the of the questions is the same as the XOR of the answers. So my G will just be X times Y. Okay, and the very nice thing about uh, XOR games is that uh, the quantum value, so the maximal winning probability for um, XOR games is actually given by the so-called vector strategies. So I don't have to maximize over um, all non-local strategies or quantum strategies, but I can really look at vectors in RD and uh, maximize over all those vectors, which is way easier than uh, doing this for quantum strategies. Okay, so what's our result? As I said, so um, we take some XOR game and then we can show that every quantum strategy for the compiled game uh, has winning probability at most uh, quantum value of the game plus some negligible function. And so we actually have two approaches to the proof. And uh, the important thing is really that we have those, this vector strategy bound, or we can say, okay, the optimal quantum value is actually achieved by some vectors because, so the, in the first approach, we call it microscopic locality approach, which sounds fancy, but in the end, we really just bound the, uh, the winning probability of any quantum strategy with some chain of inequalities and then by some vector strategy. 
And then since we know that those vector strategies are an upper bound, uh, we also get that this is at most uh, the quantum value. And uh, yeah, what we use here is uh, just uh, Jensen's inequality and this, this very strong non-signaling condition from the QHE scheme. Then um, instead of directly working with the, um, yeah, with the winning probability, one can also look at the sums of squares approach and remember that, so knowing that the, the quantum winning or the quantum value being the same as the, the value of the vector strategies, it's actually just the same as uh, knowing that the quantum value will be achieved by the level one of the NPA hierarchy. So what one can just do is one, one finds some nice SOS decomposition and then uh, define some, some pseudo expectation uh, show that it has some nice properties. And then, so this is basically, the, both of them are in the same picture. Just one, one looks at them uh, in a different way. Okay. And then uh, we also have some additional results. So um, we can also show that uh, the quantum value for parallel repetition of XOR games uh, is preserved. So parallel repetition just means that I, I don't just send one question to others, one to Bob, but I'm setting two questions or three at the same time. They have to answer with three of them and then they win the game if they win all of them at the same time. And we also get some self-testing results. So maybe you, you ask, okay, well, why is it good to bound the winning probability for search compiled games? Well, so it's always good to, to know upper bounds because then you know when you have an optimal strategy and self-testing only works if you, if you know that your strategy is optimal because then you're somehow some extreme point in some convex set, which you don't know if you don't have this upper bound. Um, and then, yeah, what, what we can show is that, so for, for some of the XOR games, we get um, anti-commutation relations for Bob's observables. And similarly, um, we can also get self-testing results for the magic square game. So the magic square game is not an XOR game, but it's one of the, the more famous games. And the good thing is that the magic square game has winning probability one. So in some protocols, it's, it's nice to actually have a game uh, yeah, where one can always win with quantum strategies. Okay, so very good. What is, uh, so maybe I give some, some summary and some outlook. So what did we do? Um, so we had this, we started with non-local games. We compile, we have this compilation procedure, and then we can show that Actually, for XOR games, uh, basically everything is preserved. So we know from before that the classical strategies cannot do better um, than the classical non-local st strategies of the non-local game. The same is true for uh, the quantum strategies. And then we also get some, some self-testing results in the sense of anti-commuting observables for, for Bob. And one can use such self-testing results to, to get yeah, a protocol for classical verification of quantum computation, which was already done by Anand and Tina. Um, and maybe just to, to say that this work is around. So last month we were actually able to show that uh, the quantum value is actually, so for compiled games or two player compiled games is actually bounded by the commuting operator value. So that's it. That's, Quite nice. And that's everything I wanted to say. Uh, thank you. Okay, any questions? So, like in the regular setting, uh, self testing results, they are like robust, right? Mm -hmm. And then this order root epsilon robustness. So, do you get similar robustness statement here? Yes. So, so in, in the crypto setting, you always have this uh, negligible function around, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no exact self-testing in a sense. So all of this will be uh, robust. So you, you can take epsilon perfect strategies and then get some. So like order root epsilon plus some negligible function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And, and there were some like other self-testing results like without 
doing this compilation, I think by Vidik and others in the past, right? I mean, in Del Moore, self testing results, yes. Yeah, so, 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 so just, you know, like uh, trying to like see, like, uh, I mean, if you can say, like, which one gives better guarantees or something, you know? I mean, yeah, I mean, in principle, so there, there are self tests for, let's say, all bipartite entangled states, things like that. But uh, it's not clear if one can compile all of those or if it makes sense uh, all the time. Yeah, because somehow here the problem is that we mostly, so self testing here is rather about, let's say, alg algebraic relations of Bob's observables, because we cannot, so we don't really have a bipartite state because we, we just have one Hilbert space, right? So this is, this is rather, um, yeah, we just look at Bob's observables because Alice's are um, encrypted. And then uh, Bob's observables will anti-commute, which is good enough to, for example, get a qubit. But we, we don't really know the whole structure of the states, for example. Yes. Uh, uh, thanks for the nice talk. So uh, you are changing uh, these non-local games to some compiled games. So then uh, you are showing the upper bound for co quantum strategy. So now uh, if, what will happen, let's say you are taking some PR box, pop up box. Sorry, say it again. A PR box. Like if, if huh. it is a, no single correlation, then yep. uh, can you also upper bound or like the non-local games also achieve some can it achieve the bound one? Or... Mm, I mean, the, I would say that the so the guarantees we get from the QHE scheme are stronger than PR box. So P PR box is like non-signaling. Uh, yeah, so I can win CHSH with PR box, right? And this I shouldn't be able to do here, but maybe there are some other so. Maybe there are some other assumptions where one can do something. Yeah, but you cannot use SOS or other. The, the sum mm -hmm. of square decomposition you cannot use. I, mean, right. I, I don't know how to proceed with, let's say, for PR box, whether there will be some bound, whether you can calculate some bound. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Yes, so I was wondering uh, if you can use this compiler for the multi prover setting that's, that's more than two prover, like. Are there any mm -hmm. uh, attempts on that? Yes. So the the original uh, protocol is also done for K players. So the idea is that you you don't just encrypt the first round, but so you, you will have K sequential rounds, and you encrypt everything but the last one. And the QHE scheme should be good enough to say uh, that I can compile all quantum strategies. But for upper bounds, I'm not sure if there's any work yet. So do you have any uh, similar results on XR games like the multiple resetting? Uh, uh, yeah, no, we don't. Okay, I see. I, I, uh, I have two questions. So first, for the um, uh, the Hilbert space that you consider for the compiled XR games is always finite dimensional. This is by, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And the second one, is there a possible way formulation of the result as a tensor norm in the tensor norm, tensor norm context or not? What do you mean? The, the classical value of the game of the, this compile XOR game or the quantum one, is, it, is there a way to rewrite it as a tensor norm in a tensor norm formalism? Like uh, since standard XOR games, so you have uh, uh, the classical value of the game and the quantum one is given by the uh, some norm associated to the game that characterize the game itself. So I don't know if there is a way to write the classical and the quantum value of this compiled XOR game as a tensor norm, no? I mean, in a, in a sense, the, the values are the same. So if you can write the non-local ones in some tensor norm, then, okay, the, the values maybe yes, but oh. I'm not sure if there's some, uh, some nice way from the, the compiled strategies to do this. Okay, thanks. I, I have a sort of follow up question to something someone asked. Um, so, if you have a K prover system, mm -hmm. um, you said that there is a compiled, natural compiled game that takes K rounds. There is also another game that takes just a single round, 
where you simultaneously encrypt the queries to all provers mm -hmm. and send them to the single prover and then the prover simultaneously answers. Of course, this is a trickier non-signaling setting because now you have interactions between all possible pairs and you don't have causality to help you. And so is anything known about this setting where you know you compile like k prover messages into a send it to a single uh, send it to a what one, one prover in encrypted format in just a single round simultaneously. Okay, I'm I'm not sure if, if this is the answer, but I thought there's some some work that it's up bounded by the non-signaling value then, because you have some spooky encryption In interactions and they yeah. can simulate. So, but they can uh, simulate all no signaling uh, attacks. Is that for all games? I'm not sure. For certain but games, let's say for CHSH. Okay, thank yeah. you. Any other questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker then.